Hi, this is Jeremy Kellett, Director of Recruiting here at Oakley Trucking, and I'm your host for this podcast. This is the Oakley Podcast, Trucking Business and Family, and this is episode 148. So on today's episode, we're going to listen to one of Oakley's owner-operator's success story, and he's from the younger generation. Uh, William Burdine from Kentucky tells us about how he wanted to be an owner-operator from a young age and wanted to do something different in the trucking industry. William also talks about some of the unique products he's hauled and what they're used for. There's some great couple of interesting stories uh, with that. And uh, joining me is uh, Miles Mason. Uh, we're going to sit down with William and one of Oakley's finest and talk how he grossed $308,000 last year. So be sure and stick around and listen to this episode. It is sponsored by Aero Truck Sales. Aero Truck Sales has been in business for over 60 years and a longtime partner of Oakley Trucking and the Oakley Podcast. Trey Visor and Keith Wilson do a great job at putting you in the right truck to fit your needs and our needs here at Oakley. They carry all makes and models to choose from, with on-site financing through transport funding. So whether you are a seasoned owner-operator or a first-time buyer, be sure to contact Keith Wilson at Arrow Truck Sales at 573-216-6047 and tell him you heard it on the Oakley Podcast. What's up, driver? What's going on? I got you. <laughs> but uh, my truck seems to run a little better off of pilot fuel. I can usually get. And you know, you would think the same trucks go in there. I mean, delivering fuel, it ain't like they. I'm I guessing don't know. just a blend, maybe. Because I can get about a half a mile a gallon better out of pilot. That's than I can weird. TA. And that counts because I can go around 200 miles only taking fuel in my truck if I have to get fuel. Mm -hmm. And that matters a half a, you know, half a mile. I get, yeah. You know, yeah, well, it really counts up. So. The fuel mileage is. is I think a lot of people do not realize how much money that is yeah. from six mile a gallon to eight mile a gallon yeah that matters i wish my truck could get 10 <laughs> my, yeah when I, when I had my tandem of course i had my other truck then and um, i was getting seven seven and a half out of that red truck with that tandem no kidding yeah and that was me going 70 mile an hour you know as what well. kind of truck you got now a 2018 Kimmer t880 okay i bought it um december of last year i leased on with a 2016 Kimmer t680 and it was an automatic and um, it had lower gear, like the gears were more for fuel module, more for pulling. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always 80,000 pounds. So you get them hills over. I live in Kentucky, West Virginia, of Virginia, them hills. I was feel like I was going to push it up the hill sometimes because <laughs> it wasn't made for that, you know. Uh, this one here does a, does a lot better as far as. So pulling. you kind of knew. You, you just got you a truck to get in and get, or you had that truck uh, before you came yeah. over here? Because I was there when I was pulling the drive in, I was pulling the dry box, and I was still getting good fuel mileage. And, we was only like 30,000 pounds, 25. So really, it done decent. I mean, it wasn't no pulling no pulling champ up the hill, but it done decent, you know. And I come over here, and it's just, yeah. even, it's, I, I could haul 47, 48 with that other truck in tandem. So that's a lot of weight to haul. You were lightweight, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's, a, that's a toll on it. Yeah, so I didn't like it. What were you doing um, prior to coming to Oakley, you'd said something down there. You yeah, uh, you uh, worked at Direct TV, and well, then you went. Yeah, I went and got my CDL, and then I went and um, there's a place by the house that like where I park my truck at now. He owns his own brokerage business, so he you know brokers that load stuff like that. Well, I pulled for him dry vans of high street forklifts out of by the house. They make them over there, and I would take them up to wherever, and then I had t I, I had um. Shoot, uh, app, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, um, truck stop in uh, DAT. And you would go up there and you'd find my loads back to, you know, back to where I was to pick up the forklifts again and go back up. Okay. I done that. And um, like I said, it's uh, Ryder, Siva had it and then Ryder bought it out. And it just, they dropped the rates by almost a dollar. Wasn't worth doing after no, that. No, because even the back calls, at the time, back calls were, you was doing this enough to, cover your fuel again back and that was it mm. yeah so but you were driving the truck for direct tv no that was uh that was uh well, it was at the time but then um i quit there and then bought my own truck because my gotcha. grandpa passed away 
And uh, we got, I, I got some inheritance money, you know. So I put that as, as a pre hefty down payment on that red truck and started my trucking business. Good for you. Grandpa was good to you, wasn't he? <laughs> he was. I'm whole life, yeah. That's Still awesome. Still is now. So What did oh. he do? I f- oh, he living. was a... Um, is he still alive? No. Okay, that's what I can say. Yeah. Inheritance, I thought you... Yeah. thought you... Uh, yeah, no. He, he acted like he might still be alive. He uh, he was a maintenance at Oconite Cable Company in Richmond for 16 years, then he, re- he retired and um, farmed. Oh, yeah. We had, we had a pretty big farm when I was growing up. So I say big as 100 and some acres, but... Pretty good size. Yeah. Big enough. And your yeah. dad was... He was a truck driver as well. Yeah. So, but he passed away right, after, right out of high school, and then... Um, my grandma passed away, and then my grandpa passed away last. Oh, so all of them are gone. Mm-hmm. You know, the only person I got left is my mom and my sister and mm-hmm. my aunt. That's good. They all over there, and you're, and you're my, from where now? Uh, Houstonville, Kentucky. Houstonville, Kentucky. Yep. Okay. I've yeah, been there. I lived on their side of the county, and they got married to my wife, and then we moved all the way to their side of the county, yeah. <laughs> to her side of the family. So, so you all all are around that area, though, so you got family around pretty close. Yeah. Yeah, all, all her family lives like, I could throw a rock and hit the back of her grandpa's farm. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, married? How long have you been married? Uh, been 10 years and married for, or together for 12. We was high school sweethearts, you could say. Awesome. Yeah. Kids? Four. <laughs> you got to work, go. don't you? Yeah, how, sure how old are you kids? Uh, 10, 9, 6, and 4, or 3, I'm sorry, 3. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Mama, is she likes it when you come home, doesn't she? Yeah. She's probably wore out. She's busy. She's a busy woman. Of course, my oldest really helps out a lot, too. Which yeah. all my kids really, they, I really don't know if you should know my kids really. So as far as they can take care of themselves and so like they're pretty good kids. It makes it nice. I get a little bit older. What do y'all do in your spare time? Uh, I, I, that's what we saw in there. Nothing really. <laughs> and unfortunately, I get home and I'm kind of just, you know, sit down and relax and I play video games. Unfortunately, when I'm at home, some too, and stuff like that. Uh, during the summer, we like, like to do like a four wheeler riding, stuff like that. Okay. But, Usually it's just me and my wife because we can't fit all the kids. Yeah, all the kids. <laughs> I'm too cheap to buy a side by side or something, so yeah. <laughs> I couldn't see playing that much for some reason. Just want to use on the weekends. I can't either. Yeah. I can't. Either. Those things have gotten ridiculously priced. Yeah, they are. I bought my. I got a, I got a twenty. I think it's a twenty one Honda Foreman. I bought it kind of like around COVID, like a little bit after COVID, mm-hmm. and it was like seven thousand seventy five hundred dollars. And now they're like eight eighty five for the same thing. They yeah. said they can't get them still. It's crazy, isn't it? It is, yeah. So, people just buying them, uh, buying it up. I couldn't see buying a. I couldn't see buying a, paying them for a razor like twenty, thirty thousand. Like the Honda Talons, they're like twenty six thousand for a four seater Honda Talon. Can't even drive it on the road. Maybe half of it is the just the status, being able to I, buy one. I guess, but yeah, I think you're gonna have to have a pretty hefty truck to to pull that. Plus a sixteen foot trailer oh, at least yeah. to pull that. A yeah, 16 foot trailer, well, I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm just saying, about, what, eight, ten thousand, maybe, mm. maybe more. I don't know. And then yeah. a, a big old half or a big old ton truck, <laughs> yeah, insane. Isn't it? it is, I know. I People's know. got money more money than they got problems, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> they act like they got money, they're, yeah. they're probably all broke. What, uh, so you were doing some of this stuff before you found Oakley. What, uh, how did you find Oakley and what made you, uh, what made you want to come to Oakley? Well, I want to do something different, really, because um, every you know anybody can haul a dry box. I want something that's a little different. Mm-hmm. They're a little, I used to say, cooler, I guess, because you see, you know, you see end up, you see a big Peter bus going on the road, big W nines all lit up and stuff, you know. And I wanted to be like that, <laughs> I guess you could say. <laughs> so, uh, of course, uh, but that was, I just want to do something different, something, something different. And well, this uh, is different. It's very different. This is nothing like I've ever. You know, done before. Really. You said you ran into one of our owner operators somewhere, or you heard us on the radio. Uh, at first, I heard you on the radio, and I kind of uh, looked at the YouTube videos that the older ones that you guys had had. I keep remember who I was on there, but it was the older ones. Yeah, because you've been here three years. Yes, sir. Okay. Three years. Yeah. Yep. And um, they got me interested because you know, on the, some of the videos they show doing it and stuff like that and talking about it. Didn't you say you bumped into Andy Zimmerman? Yes, sir. Andy Zimmerman up there in uh, the Loves, uh, right before right before we got to uh, Detroit, Michigan. Got up there, just saw him sitting there and went yeah, and talked to him. Yeah, I part. Uh, I think I can't remember. I part next to him or a couple, a couple of rows down from him. And uh, so go over and talk. I so said we spent about an hour and a half talking about Oakley, and he showed me how to do the trailer and kind of gave me the runaround stuff of it. 
and uh, he put my uh, information in on the website. And I can't remember it was the next day or the day after Dustin called me, and that was it. Started talking to you, recruiting you. Yeah. It was yeah. love at first sight. It was, <laughs> yeah. If I remember right, it was winter. It was like – uh, I, can't, I can't remember the exact time, but I think it was like November is when he put all that stuff in. And I couldn't come until, until late. Initially, it was April. And then they had some cancellations. Dust called me and said, hey, do you want to come early? I said, sure do. <laughs> so awesome. I was here the first week of December of 2019. So when I started. Well, tell us about, you know, working. Uh, you know, you, you went from a, a dry van, I guess, type yep, yes, sir. job to coming to this. You wanted something different. Well, you got something different, I didn't did, you? I yeah. But what, what's so different about it, you know, that, compared to that? Mostly just the product you haul, really. And, um you know, you haul anything from aluminum chips to rock to um, aluminum cones, alloys, you name it, we haul it in here. And it's just a lot different than backing up to a dock and you never know what you're getting. And this is, I mean, this you're, you're interactive with it, you know. You're kind of like seeing what you're hauling and you may have to move it around, and, you know. Interesting to see what it goes into, too. Exactly. I, like, I never realized, like, like, I know raw materials, you know. I didn't, like some of the stuff that I've taken these places, I never would imagine that went into the process of, you know, like steel, you know, like the alloys you take, depends on what you're taking, um, it can make the steel of it, how thick the steel and stuff is. I'm like, I never would have imagined that little rocks could make that steel either, yeah. you know, how thick it is. Did you watch the uh, the Alltech episode that we did? I did, yeah. Yeah, thought yeah. that was super yeah. interesting. It was, yeah. Yeah, that was good. You know, I saw him at uh, Tacos for Life last week. Really? Yeah, yeah he was <laughs> – him and um, he had the rest of his crew there. Yeah. And the guy, as soon as I went up to the table, and I forgot his name, actually, but I said hi to him. And, mm -hmm. and he said, man, how you uh, – good. Uh, or hi, how you doing? I said, good. And, and then this other guy stood up and said – Hey, I know you. You're on the radio. You're on the, <laughs> all right. you're on the YouTube yeah, podcast. He, he you did introduced the podcast. me to a bunch of the, said, the yeah. crew there, too, and they're all super nice people. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. It's like seeing where all of those loads go to. Yeah. You know, that's scrap. The whole process of, you yep. know. Well, to know you're, you're a piece of that. Right, yeah. It's pretty cool. It, I mean, is. it is. We take pride in it, too. I mean. I did a load here. It's been a couple months ago. Uh, it was probably, I guess, about a month ago. We picked up out of a landfill in Michigan, uh, ash. I went to landfill and I said, what are we doing? And we took it to another landfill in Alabama. I'm like, what are you all doing with it? I went up there and, you know, get to the customer and deliver it. And he said that ash, it's got fine metals in it. And he said that they're from um, Denmark, I believe is what he said they were from. And he said that they got three different places in the States. And there's might been one in Michigan. So they want some test product from Michigan brought down to Alabama. So like I said, they want to build a place up there. But he had a pile, a pile maybe about five foot tall and maybe ten foot wide. That's about about three hundred thousand dollars sitting right there, and it was like in metals that they had gotten out of that ash. No kidding. Wow. Yeah. And uh, over to the side, they had a uh, uh, big dumpsters sitting there to the side for that product that he's taking to a recycling center. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who would who would think? I never would imagine. They put it through this big old. Um, kind of like how Alltech does with their scrap, and they get the, the trash All those out big of machines it. that, yeah. Yeah, that's what they did with it, and they had three bins sit in it. Is it like a conveyor type uh, deal that they? Uh, it's like um, they put it in there, and it had the thing that kind of turns around. Okay. And it goes down through the machine, and they drops it into different bins depending on the size of the product, he said. I got it. Getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Right. And it's... then the ash came at the end off of a conveyor, kind of like what you was talking about. And they put loaded the ash back onto us, and we took it back up to the landfill in Michigan and dumped it back in the landfill. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it yeah. really was. It is. Crazy. Have you ever had a load freeze on you? Yeah, uh, it was my my first year here. I came, came here it was like March or something like that. It may, oh, well, I guess it may have been February. So we, was, well, it may have been March. We was in um, Georgia, picking up talking about Georgia. Took it to to um, Scott City, Missouri, I believe it was. A little rock. It was like eighty degrees down there. Get halfway across through there, and it was zero and snowing. Oh my gosh! Yeah, we got there. I got there next morning to unload, and it, and they was a like, bunch of trucks there was frozen up. So how do you even how do you deal with a situation like that where you're? It's yeah. all frozen solid. Yeah. Well, I got lucky. Some of it came out, okay. but like on the walls, it had mm -hmm. really, and you just gotta get a shovel and a go at it, you know. <laughs> Oakley's workout program. Yeah, yeah. I, I could use it too. <laughs> I 
I remember when I was talking to to Jimmy a couple weeks ago, he was talking about he had a when he was I think he was going up to uh Manitoba. We were talking yeah. about Manitoba earlier. He had a load freeze on him and he was just in the back just shoveling it. And then he he saw a uh a shovel get thrown over the side into it into his uh end up and another oakley owner operator was just hopped in <laughs> didn't even know him and just started helping him yeah shovel it that's good that is yeah we were talking about that you made some good friends over three years you've been here i have yeah i got more friends from oakley than i do anywhere else <laughs> really? really yeah and you well, still keep up with some of the guys that you went through orientation with right yeah yeah i got one guy here that i, I remember there's only, like, there's only three left that i can remember that's still here but uh, i still take up take up with the guy that went to come to end up or talk to the guy with the end up. Community. You can, you can edit that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Loop Zone is open a new location in Statesville, North Carolina. It's located north of Statesville on Highway 77, just west of exit 59. Loop Zone services both single trucks and truck fleets, so whether you're driving through or you have a trucking company nearby, Loop Zone are the experts to turn to. Loop Zone's specialty is full service oil changes that take approximately 30 to 40 minutes. They also offer tractor trailer grease, gearbox service, generator service, reefer service, and DOT inspections. They also go the extra mile when it comes to quality control. What does that mean? That means your semi truck is checked not just once, but twice to ensure all service and parts are good to go. Loop Zone does this so you can rest easy knowing that your truck is in top condition. No other service center knows semi trucks better than Loop Zone. Check out loopzone.com for all their locations, and when you go in there, tell them you heard it on the Oakley Podcast. You ever talk to Andy anymore? Yeah. The guy that recruited you? Yeah, I seen he had a great picture on Facebook. I believe it was last week. Uh, yeah, there. yeah. He got he was, he was there at a customer, and they got talking about drones. And um, Andy said, well, I got a drone in the in the truck here. And he went and got it out, and he got some, he got some of them cool pictures on Facebook. No kidding. Yeah, he, really cool, really cool. I think they were in Tazewell? Ta- Ta- uh, Ta- Tazewell, Virginia. Tazewell, yeah. yeah. I think he's on – isn't Andy on the calendar? I believe he was, yes, yeah, sir. I think he made the calendar this year. Yeah. Calendar man. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a good guy. When I first started, he's the only one I talked to. He probably got sick and tired of me probably. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was calling to ask for help, man. You know, I didn't know. You know? Yeah. So yeah. He really that's good that you've got those contacts here because they can help you get in and out of places, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. You know, you can call some of these guys who have been around and, and – they know how to get in and out or what time to go or what – more probably better of what not to do. Right, yeah. I've had some of the places. Yeah. Have you? Yeah, I have some of the places you go to that – the address is here, but you, they want you to come in on the back street to come in or something like that. And, you know, and it's good to know, talk to people, to get that kind of information, what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah, we see trucks here a lot of times, not necessarily our trucks, some of our trucks sometimes, come right, right through the par- front – Parking lot of this office, right? And go down, yeah. go down the side. We you was know actually talking about how around. Like, yeah. Were you Gribble Street? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't come down Gribble Street if yeah. you're if you're in a tractor trailer coming to Oakley. Don't come down Gribble Street. You know that's what it says. Come down Lincoln Avenue. I usually I usually put in a hundred Oakley Drive, and it brings you right to the front door right there. Oh, does it? Yeah, that's what okay. I do. Yeah. That's good. Of course, I've got it memorized by now, but yeah, right, <laughs> right. right. So I know I put it mostly just for a time when I'm going to get there and stuff, you know. So. How was uh, how was last year? You know, you, you've you've been here three years, yeah. and I done very I done really good last year. Even my time off with the issues with my truck at the beginning of the year, after the beginning of the year, I got my truck all done up and fixed. I done really well. I grossed. Uh, I think it was three oh eight last year. What oh, I grossed. Wow, nice. Yeah. That's single owner operator, and yeah. how often you go home? Uh, I usually I think last year I stayed out more than I usually do, but I'm um, Usually, usually every week. Usually, okay. So, and you had mentioned that you're thinking of switching to new, to pneumatics. I had thought about that, but I like the option of. Um, I think it'd be a lot cooler. I mean, I say cooler, but something different, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I think uh, I like the option of being able to go home if I need to go home, like every weekend. You got four kids. I know. Uh, you need to be home. <laughs> that's what I've had some drivers tell me. You need to go home and see them while they can, and later on maybe switch or something. So. I know a lot of guys talk about they like the science, the the challenge and the science of running the pneumatics. Right, it's just yeah. like a different problem every time. Right, yeah. But I haven't caught up with Jimmy Evans on his YouTube channel, but he made that change, and I'm sure he's talked about a mm-hmm. bunch of that. Probably need to go see. I talked to him a couple of weeks ago. He says he loves it. Does he? Yeah. But I think Jimmy loves anything. Hell he loves, yeah. He's good. He's, he's a, a great guy. Different animal, man. Yeah. He is a, a character. 
Yeah. Great guy. I've watched some of his videos and Tanner's as well. And there's yeah. a couple of guys doing TikToks now, I say, that's doing a really good job of uh, displaying Oakley and stuff like that. So That's what we're – I mean, that's a great tool. It is. You know, to get your name out there for sure. Yeah. Um, I guess it also can get a bad one if we well, don't. don't get in the ditch. <laughs> we don't watch it. Yeah. Don't get in the ditch. Out of the ditch. Yeah. I have to tell Miles to stay out of the ditch all the time. Right. I you, do you ever get in the ditch? No, not yet. No. I've, I've been here. For, I've been here for a very long time and never had no wrecks or. <laughs> He's talking about <laughs> two different things though. Yeah. We talking about when we talk about getting in the ditch, we're talking about. Uh, Stooping down to somebody's level that oh. wants to argue. Oh no! You know, I got what you saying. Okay. Putting putting some comments out there, and you know that are not arguing with people on the internet. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, Miles wants to, and I was like, no, no, no. I'm like, I'm with Miles. I agree. I we don't, want we to. don't we just don't respond. I just want to get down in there. And gets in the ditch. I was like, no, we got to stay out of the ditch, yeah. Miles. I seen a TikTok the other day of a driver, and he's a fairly new driver as well. And uh, he Brian was, Lang. It was. It yep. was. Yeah. And uh, got a beautiful truck, so like that. And he's doing a really good job of explaining Oakley on TikTok as far as like the pay and stuff like that. He's doing a very good job of it, pretty accurate. And then uh, they have someone commented on his TikTok about I'm making seven thousand a week, y'all are making chump change. Oh. I, co- I commented on there, said I'm oh. making that now, and I don't have no trailer fees, no trailer maintenance, no no operating authority. I'm sure I'm getting a cheaper fuel and price and everything else. Yeah. And of course, I shouldn't have commented, but I did anyway. But, <laughs> Get out of the ditch. Hey, <laughs> he never commented back. So, uh, you know, he just didn't want to. So, I'm just trying to get you stirred up. Yeah. 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 That's what my wife tells me to get me stirred up. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stay out of it. Stay yeah. out of it. The internet. Much of it's changed key- the game. Keyboard war- warriors out there yeah. now. Been here three years. Yes, You've sir. had some uh, ups and downs, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's like any other. Uh, any other job, you're going to have some problems, ups yeah. and downs. What's some of the worst problems you've had over here? Uh, just as far as my truck issues, really, um, you know, I bought that truck in a month I into it. They had some issues with it, but exhaust leaks, something like that. As far as the fence before I bought it, they didn't fix it. Mm. So um, anyway, finally got all that stuff done, drove it for a month because I needed to make some money. I'd been off for a month, you know, with the with the selling my other truck and getting the wet kit off and that kind of stuff, you know. And... Um, Bought this one. I had drove a month with it like that. Well, then I went to the shop, had it fixed, had it took care of, and then it had been chirping some, like you know, hearing chattering, chattering going on. And um, I took it to the dealership, and they said your cam is scarred. And out of the type of motor I've got, they got to take the motor completely out and pull the cam out from the back of it in order to replace that cam. How long did that take? I was down for over a month with it. I was down for like a a week from getting it in. I wait for them to take the motor out, and then they got the wrong cam sent to them because that was during kind of still kind of during the part issue that they've got still got going on pretty much, and um, so they the wrong cam, so they take it all back apart, take the cam back out, and they overdyed it another one, and it was the right one, and finally two weeks later they finally got it figured out and stuff like that. So, so other than truck problems, yeah, as far as that's it. What's yeah. the worst thing, worst thing at this job job you do? What's the What's the worst thing? Um, the worst thing, uh, I mean, there's nothing really terrible about this job. I mean, there's some stuff that, you know, that oh, I don't like scrap yards because nobody does, you know, so right. like that. Yeah. But that's a load. It's obvious. It's, yeah. yeah. But as far as the Oakley, I like Oakley pretty well, so. How's your uh, relationship with your dispatcher, Manuel? Not good. Not good? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, I made him get along re- really well. We, we've only had a few miscues, but uh, that was just, you know, that was been it. We've been pretty good together what do you what do you think the secret to a to you know having a good relationship with your dispatcher is i have to say communication you gotta communicate you know if you're gonna be late you gotta let somebody know if you got the issues going on at home you know if you don't want to reveal what it is kindly you know tell them i got stuff going on at the home you know yeah but uh, it's communication i'm say and be honest too don't you know don't lie and say something's going on and yeah. it's not you know <laughs> yeah that goes without saying i mean that's yeah Honest and communication. Has been has been well been your dispatcher since you leased on to Oakley? Yes, sir. And yes. Yeah. Three years strong. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't get him to come up here week. I tried. I tried <laughs> to get him to. He said he wasn't going to. No, he about passed out the last time we got him up here. <laughs> yeah. He, he's expecting to tell you so. He's had that pressure too. He may have passed out this time. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that wouldn't that wouldn't have been good. No. Uh, I mean, let's talk about your dad, because you, you told me earlier that your your dad uh was a truck driver. That's as correct. Well, right? yeah. Yep. And so what kind of 
do you know like how how he got started and why he wanted to, to uh, drive? Kind of what your experience being a kid. Well, kind of around, around where I live, there's not really much to do. <laughs> yeah, a factory or a fast food, that's going to be about it. So you know, he drove just to make more money, pretty much. You know, he done it for a long time, and in there a couple years um, for his passing, he went local and was hauling for for oil gas, hauling propane to around the houses and stuff. So. And that's what kind of primed you to have a desire to. Well, I, you know, it's crazy. I, I was in, I came here as like third or fourth grade. You know, they go through school and like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mine was always a truck driver for some reason. I guess because of him being one and stuff like that. And um, I was telling Miles earlier downstairs that um, my wife has been, you know, we could get through high school stuff. So, so um, she got pregnant right out of high school. So I always wanted to be. Cause at the end, I was taking uh, tech classes in high school to be a mechanic. I was pretty good too, like wiring and stuff like that. Yeah, I was very, I was pretty good at it. So I wanted to go to school to to do that, pursue that, and uh, well, it happened. <laughs> Had to go get a factory job, so I, you know, couldn't do school and do it all. So we're talking about how expensive diapers are. Yeah, <laughs> I told him. I said after ten years, I finally get to stop buying diapers. My youngest son is. Just got out of them, so hallelujah. That's right. There's light at the end. <laughs> right. How many kids do you have, Jeremy? I got two. Two boys. They're still in diapers. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, one of the podcasts is he. One of your sons moved to New York. Was that right? New York yeah. City. Is mm-hmm. he still living up there? Yeah, still there. So he, uh, he loves it. Loves really? It. Yep. That's a fast pace. It there. is. It is. I was so glad that he uh, the other night he FaceTimed us and said he's coming home to see us in April like April the 20th. So I was relieved because I wasn't wanting to go back to New York City. Yeah, I, I was wanting you. to see him because we hadn't seen him since Christmas. It's getting kind of – we need to see him. But uh, right. glad to hear he's coming Yeah, definitely coming to see us. What would you uh, – you're pretty young. How old are you? I'm 30. 30 years old. Yes, sir. And you've been driving – About seven years. About seven years. Yep. Can you t- – I mean, what would you tell somebody young, young people maybe coming out of high school um, – about, you know, because I guess at high school, there's not a lot of, uh, you don't get introduced to trucking. Right, yeah. You know, a whole lot in high school. And then you've got that time from the time you graduate 18 till, you know, you can actually run across a state line right now uh, until you're like 21. So, right. you, you know, 18 to 21, you have to do that in state stuff. But what would you tell a young person maybe coming out of high school? How, uh, what it's like to become a truck driver and how good it is or how you go about doing it, maybe the best way, some of the challenges you had, right. you know, uh, I mean, because it's obviously, I mean, you grossed $308,000 last year. Right, yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you you could make a good living driving a truck. You definitely can, yeah. Uh, you just can't be a, I mean, these big me- mega carriers, you know. I've heard some of them people are making fairly good money, stuff like that, but that would probably be the easiest route to go, you know. It would be a, to, to get your experience, to get your, you know, your license. As a majority of the bigger companies, they'll kind of give you, you know, put you through the schooling and stuff like that. But I would say as soon as you got your experience to get out of that and start doing something better, you know. Because, like, mo- most of the good companies, when I say good, mo- most of the better companies, they want you to have two years of experience at least. Yeah. So, you know, I would say just buy your time and do the experience and pay your dues. Pay your dues. Get your yeah. feet wet with the mega carriers and then move on to. Yeah, that's what that's what better. I that's what I did. I, I went to CR England, unfortunately, and got my license out. And that's where I got my license at. Okay. And um, I, I I wasn't making four hundred dollars a week, mm. and I was sending most of that home to my wife to pay for the bills and and diapers. <laughs> so, you know, so I was eating maybe ramen noodles and them little noodles in a box or or using points at the time. Yeah. To uh, to making survive, it work. making it work. Yeah. So. But you could see that that it's it's going to get better. Oh yeah, it did. <clears throat> yeah, the more longer you're in it, different it gets better. As long as you want to better yourself, like you know, don't stay somewhere just because you think you have to. There's always something better out there. I guess yeah. you could say. Well, and I just think I'm thinking of young kids coming out of high school. You know, what? How could they get into trucking? You know, and. And what made you get into it? Uh, obviously, your dad was into it. So, you, right. in third grade, you told the whole class you <laughs> wanted to be a truck driver when right. you grow up. I mean, right. and that's probably a lot of it. But, you know, a lot of these <clears throat> kids coming out of high school are not introduced to trucking. Right. Yeah. And, you know, they got to, they, they need to understand that there are those options out there. And, and truck driving is a good occupation it, to have. It is, yeah. 
I mean, it keeps America moving. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, it definitely does. Yeah. And, and the earlier they can get introduced, the better it is. I think. Yeah. I mean, obviously, thirty years old. Right. Yeah. I, as far as I'm, I'm trying to think. Oakley Trucking is a 100% owner-operator company. We specialize in hopper bottom, end dump, and pneumatic trailers. We provide the trailer free of charge, and you provide the truck. We have a large customer base that reaches the whole United States as well as parts of Canada. Our owner-operators live anywhere from Texas to North Carolina to Pennsylvania to Wisconsin and everywhere in between, and we get them home weekends. We take it seriously when you join Oakley Trucking because we need you to be successful. Oakley offers great benefits and competitive mileage pay so you know that when your wheels are turning, you're generating money no matter if you're loaded or empty. We understand that you want to make a good living and that you make our living. We only take on independent contractors and to be honest with you, we are very particular on who we lease on. You must have a good driving record, good work history, and clean, dependable truck. So if you're interested in Oakley Trucking or just want some more information, you can go to oakleytrucking.com, listen to our weekly podcast, The Oakley Podcast, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You know, I know a lot of them just go to CDL school yeah, there in the local it. town or something, get their CDL, and then try to get on with somebody. Right, and you local. know, to train them, or I guess they can go through like you did with a CR England or somebody like that, and then you probably they probably pay for it, and you got to stay there for so, so long. long. Right, Is that yeah. how that works. Yeah, you had to stay uh, there. It was a year, or if he was in the military, you could do it for nine months. Okay, so you so, had to stay with them a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think if it's, the other community colleges now have, or the, by the house, they have truck driving training as well at the community college. I think it's like a six-week course as well. It's a pretty, pretty good course because, mm-hmm. unfortunately, the make carriers, you're there like a week and you've got your CDL, where the community college is probably, is probably a better option, really, especially at a high school, you know, they'll train you a lot better. And I bet you was nervous when they turned you loose for that CDL and said, here, take this, I was, drive my, this truck to – Wherever Chicago. Well, my first, I got my license, um, Gary, Indiana, is where their their place was at. So we, my, I got my trainer finally. We went to Chicago, picked up, and went to New York City. Oh my gosh! Uh, went to Queens, and I think we went to uh, the Bronx. So we went to a little sink or swim. Yeah, to a little bitty uh, meat place there. In, how many cars did you hit? I didn't hit none, <laughs> thankfully. But I don't know how you didn't. Well, there's one place we went to. I didn't turn as I was like my first like couple of weeks. So I went turn like pulled up and was gonna take a right into the thing. Sure, like no, you can't do that. You gotta swing out wide. <laughs> as I forgot to do that, so <laughs> it was kind. It was rough the first first little bit. You a little know, stressful. Figured, yeah, yeah. It, it it is at first. Do you have a good trainer? Uh, yeah, yeah. He was all right. <laughs> he was all right. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You pretty much self trained, uh, did you? Well, he was on with me for like, uh, I think he was like, he's supposed to be with you for three months, and he was with me for like a month, and a month and a half, and he quit and went and started hauling. He was from California, he started hauling JB, Modal, JB Hunt Intermodal mm. and did that. So, <laughs> who trained you when you came to Oakley? Um, you remember? William Riley. I'm not sure we're still here or not. I haven't talked to him. And Dan long. Riley had that white Freightliner. William Dan Riley? Oh, that, or, or was it his son? Uh, it made me say it was a grain freight liner. He was from um, that San Antonio area. I think so. Yeah. So that's the younger Dan Riley. Um, we had a William Dan w- Riley. He's passed away now. Oh really? Yeah. He worked here for a long time, but his uh, I think it's his son or his nephew came, and he had the same name. Okay. But I don't think it was his son. But uh, he's still here. I'm pretty sure. Okay. I know. I know. I talked to him. He'd been here for like fifteen years, something like that. He had. Oh the, well, then that's oh. the that was the uh, that was the older guy. Oh really? Yeah. yeah he had. They had to watch, and he showed me to watch us. We was running the the barge between um, Catusa and the uh, it was Kremlin at the time, running it back and forth. This is my training, and uh, we stopped doing that there in Catusa, and we was there just talking, you know. And he said, "This is my watch. I had. I've gotten in a jacket and stuff like that." That was the old man. You with, one of those old watches. Old man, but, yeah. That was William Dan Riley, great guy. He passed away. Though. Really, I didn't yeah. know that. I want to say last year. Yeah. Oh wow! We I went. Didn't... We went to the funeral. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, he he trained me. He was a great trainer. I stayed with him. I think it was two weeks, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, he was a really great guy. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So who was who was the person that you immediately called if you had an issue? Well, there for at the beginning it was Andy there for a while. Yeah. 
until I got stuff figured out on my own. I didn't bug, like bugging, but um, I kind of figured it. I mean, so most of our stuff is common sense, you know, but, you know, I was trying to learn the product and stuff like that, how the best way to load it, like roofing rings, you know, on the middle and stuff like that. So just depend on placement of the product and stuff, kind of what my questions was. Yeah, and I guess that's a learning I mean, you got to learn that on the go because different right. products you put in different parts of the trailer, whether it's going to fill the trailer up or it's just not even going to cover the floor of the trailer, right? Right, right, yeah. It's like salt and you know stuff like that will kind of stick. You don't want it in the nose mm. because if it gets in there and sticks, it may come out at the bottom, but you get around that nose around that doghouse, it'll stick, and it could lead to disaster, unfortunately. So yeah. Stuff like that, it's kind of, I kind of push it a little bit further to the back so it's not sticking on that nose. You got to have some common sense working here, don't you? You sure do, yeah. I mean, you got to, you got to know what's going on. It's just not a get in there and drive from point A to point B. No, this is different ball game. Because you may look at, you may go dump somewhere and it may look level. You get trailer going up in the air and you know, especially on ground like at farms and stuff, it may keep away a little bit. And you may start, you got to got to pay attention. Yeah, use common sense. So look, I've been here for three years and I haven't had none tip over. I had some a little close, but I've never had none. You know, take the you know, t- I forgot. <laughs> you know, take the fall yet. So I've yeah. seen some crazy videos of trailers falling over. Yeah, just like that's a nightmare. I seen them last. You saw one. Yeah, you I and Corey were talking about one. Yeah, on a on the community page on Facebook yesterday. What was it? One. What, it just it just wasn't our guy over. though. No, no, no. No, you're talking about though somebody was still in the air. Driving. Oh yeah, they were they were going down oh, the road. Yeah. yeah, and they had their their trailer up in the air, and they hit an overpass. Oh my god! And just you, threw dirt all over the or whatever he was hauling. How do you not see that in your mirror? <laughs> you know, that's what I don't get. I don't know. Just to clarify, that was not an Oakley. Guy. No, I've seen that video <laughs> no. too. It was a meme. It was a meme that okay. somebody posted. I got you. I got you. <clears throat> I don't know. I guess it's you go into autopilot and you just don't really. That's how car accidents happen. Yeah, you know, it's like paying attention. Yeah, blind temporary blindness or whatever, whatever it's called. Pretty cool, man. That's good information. I mean, uh, I, I think it's, uh, you know, people can relate to you, uh, especially being young. I think is really good uh, to be able to do what you've done already. I mean, and right. you're and you're managing a family, right? Uh, with four kids, there's nothing easy about that, and being on the road, right? Um, I know. Yeah. My wife, she does a really great job of taking care of it at the house. So, Man, what would we do without good women, good wives, <laughs> good know. mamas? I'll tell you, we'd be lost. We would be, yeah. We'd be lost without that. So, Well, good. I, I just, uh, if y'all don't, y'all got anything else to add? Mm-mm. Do you use your CB radio? <laughs> What's a CB radio? <laughs> no, yeah, I do, yeah. I, and I wave at Oakley drivers too, so they're putting that out there. I was gonna ask because like, some people say they're like, "Oh, Oakley drivers don't wave at me anymore." I, going down the road, nobody waves at anybody anymore. That's true. Yeah. I don't. I sometimes I wave at somebody, I wave back, and I'm like, "Forget you! I ain't gonna wave at no more Oakleys for the rest of the day." And then next time I see Oakley, he's waving real big at me, and I'm like, "Well, yeah. I feel like a." Like a <laughs> you, know? uh, you gotta wave at each other. Yeah, you gotta be friendly. I know some people don't like it, but. The team out here, so yeah. I know at one point I believe I, man, I was one of the, one of the youngest owner operators here. I'm not sure that still holds true or not, but you're close. I know of a couple of other younger drivers that's pretty close to me. But I believe I'm still a little younger than I mean, them. There was a guy a couple months ago. Yeah, we've got some young. in their twenties. Sure. Yeah, yeah, that are young, and that's uh, that's always good. You know, I would say fascinating for me to hear, but to, that young guys are. You know, that's why I asked you that earlier. I don't think young people know the opportunity they have right. in the trucking world, you know. It's a, it's a definitely a wide-open opportunity. This is the, the problem I feel now with people is, like, they don't want to leave and go out and leave their family, stuff like that, you know. I think that's the biggest hardship of trying to find drivers is they don't want to leave, you know, yeah. leave out, you know, from their family for a whole week, two weeks. Depends on, you know, where you live at. I believe that's the biggest downfall. I guess. People don't want to do it. They ain't got four kids. If they yeah. have four kids, they want to leave for they a week. Would. That's <laughs> true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no. I'm unfortunate, so. Yeah, good. If you have a want for adventure. Definitely. Yes. Come on, drive a truck. Now, I go to Canada t- as well, so with the end up. Yeah. So it's definitely, definitely see some country out there. How many trips you made up there? I made five or six this year already. Oh, nice. Yeah. So were you up there with uh with Jason Dobler? They were running up in Canada. What was they running? 
I don't even remember. I try not to. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. I, I, I've been hauling alloys from uh, Marietta up to um, Hamilton, Ontario, so I've been doing a lot of. Okay. And then I hauled scrap out of Ontario, coming back down to Wabash, stuff like that. I've done that a couple times. So Yeah. They're keeping you busy. Uh, there for last year, there was a while I was running East Liverpool up to, into, way up into Quebec a little bit. Mm. Way up in there. Is crossing the border easy? Yeah, really. Megan does a great job. She's uh, She does a fantastic job at what she does. Um, never had an issue crossing, like, nothing like that. Um, man, really, you're supposed to the border getting paperwork and the passport, ask you a few questions, you know, like firearm, you know, drugs, that type of stuff, you know, and uh, you're you're in. <laughs> yeah, then coming back? Coming back, it's a little bit more. It's not as easy. Um, I mean, it's easy. They ask you, just give them the stuff back, ask you the same questions. They seem to ask a few more questions than Canada does. Like what? Um, you know, are you bringing a cup of fruit back into the country? Fruit? Yeah, like meats and fruits and stuff oh. like that, yeah. You know, anything illegal, stuff like that, you know. Hmm. Most of the time, Canada, you get up, hand them, they'll ask you where you're going. Well, how long you been still playing on being in Canada? Any firearms? No. Nope. Okay, here you go. Have a good day. Yeah. Pretty simple. Pretty simple. It is, yeah. Because I've heard some drivers having issues crossing, but I've never had an, yeah. no issues crossing. We don't have much at all. I don't hear much of if we have a lot of problems, but I'm sure we've had some. But Yeah. I'm, you know, Megan's, <coughs> every time Megan's usually just around the top of stuff. There's one time I had a the paperwork, Hatton wasn't correct on the customer's end or whatever. Mm. Called me and gave me a heads up notice so I could park up, and she got figured out and crossed on went later on. So she does a great job. So. Makes it a lot easier. They say anything, uh, are there any signs up about the uh, speed limiters up there? In Canada, yeah. You are, you're you're supposed to be governor, yes, in Ontario and Quebec. There are big signs you cross. All all large trucks must have speed limiters. Mm. But they don't. But that's what um, I was kind of talking about earlier. You know, they're talking about doing a speed limiter bill for the the states. You know, they haven't really sent a mileage yet, you know. But up there at 65, up there. And I usually go 65 because I obviously don't want a ticket in Canada. So <laughs> I do 65, 66, you know. But there's up there, trailers still just rip my doors off up there in Canada, doing their bad bet 70, 72 up there. So so not everybody governs their truck. No. Probably no. nobody does. Nobody does, probably, because I don't like to really enforce it really no more. I mean, if, but I mean, if you're going like crazy fast or whatever, yeah. But if you're, because the, even the traffic up there is governed to this, like, the, the speed limit is still the same for the cars, but you know how they are. They're like down here, they just fly. But up there, the trucks are supposed to be. So I guess if you're keeping up the flow of travel, they're probably not really going to say yeah. a whole lot. Well, as you know, out there in left lane, is blowing by everybody, and they probably ain't going to say nothing. But they don't ask you that when you're getting it, when you're entering. No. Nothing. But I guess if you got pulled over, they could hook up to it and see to make sure you are governor. But yeah. I've never had that issue. So Yeah, good. All right. What do you think? Good deal. Thanks for listening to the Oakley Podcast. As always, appreciate you guys tuning in and commenting and subscribing to our YouTube channel and, and talking it up to everybody else out there. We, you know, we love it when you spread the word about Oakley. If you've got questions or comments, man, send them to me. Uh, go, to, go to our website, go to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can call me here at the office at Oakley Trucking. I'd be glad to visit with you about – matter of fact, I've got a couple of guys that uh, – they always call me and, and tell me about the episode, good and bad, and I enjoy that. So uh, y'all reach out to me and do that too. Also, check out our previous episodes. There's, uh, you know, we've been doing this now for, uh, man, three years, I guess, and there's a lot of good episodes in the past that we have uh, we have put out. You need to check those out. And also, we've got some good ones coming up in the future. Uh, a lot of stuff from the truck show coming up. Be sure and uh, check us out next week. Thanks for listening. Oh,